I guess, boss one here. And today let's talk about my day three, day four update for Forbidden Sanctum. So since the last time we've spoken, a lot of things happened. Um, first up, I want to talk about the lead mechanic and later how I beat Feared with this build and also some upgrades that I made to the build in general. Right now we have around about 12 to 13 divines invested. But first up, it's time to talk about the league mechanic because I've been playing quite a few more runs ever since then. In fact, I just finished my first um, four floor run. I'm not going to spoil anything, but there is something more that you can do in the last run and that I have not done yet. But uh, at least I'm happy with myself that I've kind of engaged with it and I figured some small stuff out. So I thought I would talk about it. I gotta say I had quite a bit of fun engaging with the lean mechanic. I got two divines two times um, and then there was free runs where I didn't really get much, a little bit of bubble gun currency. But the thing is I didn't really care that much about the currency. I just cared about it just being fun. It was a nice distraction and I think it is pretty well made overall. There's definitely some things to be improved. We talked about this last time. But overall after I decked out my character a little bit more, exactly what I thought would happen. Uh, it got a lot more trivial. As well as that, once you get your relics, the runs become so, so much easier. So for example, if we look here, um, I already started a new run. This is what I get from my relics. Now, when you start out or you just got your first relic, you will almost get nothing. But here I get 45 inspiration, 55 inspiration when you get an affliction. Uh, when you start a new floor, you just get all of these stacking effects that basically, um, in case you don't know, inspiration is basically like resolve just as sort of a shield. So it's fair to say that you almost start out with double the resolve and then whenever you kill a boss, you get another huge boon. Also, you get a lot uh, smarter over time uh, with what downsides and what upsides to pick. But this is way too much to cram into one video. I will make something dedicated to it where I explain the lead mechanic or at least much as I know. I just want to tell you that once you unlock these relics and you get them uh, either from traders, but mostly from bosses, um, you will get a lot stronger and it will be a lot easier to complete them. So running the first and the second boss over and over again uh, in three to four runs, you will be completely decked out in terms of relics. And then it will be quite easy to get to floor four. Obviously, there's still some problems that some builds just will not be able to do it. For example, I had a lot of people have problems with Righteous Fire. Um, I don't know what to do about that. I just know that my next build will probably be very, very uh, focused towards this. Um, we're going to talk about that soon. Now, uh, the second thing I want to say, because I saw some other streamers do the lead mechanic, they really hated it. Um, th the problem with this lead mechanic is it's not supposed to be rushed. Sure, you can rush it, but you're going to lose a lot of resolve and you're probably not going to get very far. And this is the problem with the lead mechanic versus what PUE wants you to do. It wants you to be... Uh, currency per hour focused. It wants it to be a spreadsheet, kind of, um, in endgame at least, if you want to get your items. But this is different. Sidestepping an attack instead of face tanking it is important because you can't just flask back your resolve and stuff like that. So you have to play it more like a different game rather than PoE. And this is something I caught myself doing as well. I just rushed through. I didn't really think much about it because that's just how I used to play PoE. Uh, so I think this is pretty important to know. If you switch that mindset, um, the runs are going to be a lot easier. And I want to talk about sanctified relics because they are actually no joke. When we talk about um, returns, we're not just talking about divines. We're talking about the 11th item slot. These do work for your character wherever you are. So for example, this is uh, the second um, sanctified relic that I got. It rolls up to 8% increased damage per power charge. So if I had this on a decked out power charge stacker and I got a perfect roll and that is without a second mod on it, um, this would give me around right about 100% increased damage. Now, if you think about reward, right, getting divines per hour, um, just getting currency power to buy yourself power, it's really, really hard to replace this because it's a, another item slot that you cannot just buy. So in a sense, the potential to get some of these relics is just absolutely insane and can't really be outweighed in terms of um, currency power. So for example, if we look here, um, there is a mod for strength dexterity and intelligence stacking which are completely insane two to three fire damage to attacks if you guys remember that was what we had on the recombinator boots mod in a dedicated build this will straight up be 30 to 40 percent more damage and then look at this plus one to maximum power charge frenzy charge endurance charge this is just one mod and these can have up to two mods uh, then uh, there's also implicits then you can have and those are uh, all the keystones right we don't 
currently, or I at least do not know how to get these, um, but this is pretty hype. Like if you're a power charge stacker and you're getting like a plus one maximum power charge and then you get like a good keystone, like for example, Lethe Shade, um, I mean, just think about how much power that is. You can't really make up for that power with, I don't know, dropping the vines. Now, this is not for me to excuse it completely because there will be buffs uh, to rewards in total. Uh, they also made their own thread here. If you want to check this out, I'll link it down in the description. There's life updates uh, to all the small bugs that have been fixed. And there's also going to be some updates. Like, for example, here, we're going to reduce the delay before Aureus coins can be picked up, slightly increasing the pickup range there's going to be new patches coming over the next few days. One thing that I still want to know is where the hell is this crafting room when you can get like implicits apparently, or you can, I don't know, augment these. I'm not exactly sure. Do they exist? Maybe they're just super rare and I haven't seen them yet. If you have seen something where you can craft sanctified relics, please put it down in the description. I would love to know. Overall, after playing a little bit more with it, I got to say it's kind of growing on me. The one thing that I think might be a problem actually is that it will be too easy over time once people figure everything out, once people have completely crazy characters. But then again, it's the same with Heist and some people still like that. It's probably the same with Delve up to a certain depth and people still like it. Uh, so overall, I'm actually looking forward to what they will change with the mechanic in general. I'm looking forward to farming more Sanctified Relics. This has been quite fun. Uh, then let's talk about how the build went. So Lightning Strike has now carried us through everything. We have all the favorite slots. Uh, we have everything unlocked on the Atlas. We're completely ready to blast. Um, feared was, I think we died one time because I'm just dumb. Uh, but overall, it was really, really easy. The build is definitely not without flaws. And the way I described the progression was definitely not perfect. Um, if I would do it again, I would definitely improve on some things. So if I ever am going to update this, um, I will definitely do so a little bit more precise. However, Lightning Strike was just completely awesome. And once we broke like the five to six divine realm, uh, we just completely popped off. As for mapping, we're currently doing a Delirium Beyond strat with a little bit of Legion in there um it's pretty damn fun i'm probably going to make a video about this it's very very lucrative especially now that uh, tainted orb fusings are so expensive as well as tainted chromatics which drop quite a bit tainted orb fusings quite rare but the chromatic orbs they drop like almost every map looking at the character we're currently level 95 soon to be level 96 we upgraded quite a bit here um we actually in the end went, did not go for hits can't be evaded I think it would be quite hard to make a better dagger than this. Um, we spammed deafening essences of, I think this was fire. I just took the cheapest one until we got like tier two cold damage. Uh, we also had the poison mod, which was not the worst. The cold res actually did something for me. And then I crafted on attack speed to finish it up. And we also replaced Lacosidae for a buckler like this with 30% increased reservation efficiency uh, for the gems that are socketed. It also gave us a lot of life elemental resistances and a little bit of endurance charges um, with the block note down there. Uh, and what we did to compensate was basically just take this wheel, acuity, and then the dexterity mastery. Another thing we changed is we got our GG, so to say, cluster jewel, which is unholy grace, unwavering evil, and dark ideation. The reason this is GG is because the best note here is unholy grace. Everything else is just 30% increased damage. The stun doesn't even work, right? Uh, but only with Dark Ideation will you actually have both in front, so you don't have to take nodes in the back. And we added two Medium Cluster Jewels. Both have uh, Circling Oblivion and Flow of Life. These are basically your GG Jewels. Um, very comfy for the region. Life, all the damage. Incredibly strong. They're also not that expensive, at least as of now. We also added some Jewels. One thing I want to say is that uh, the Transcended Mind that I had in the original POB, there's currently a bug where you cannot get it. So in case you're wondering, yes, I would love to get that. It's like 18% more damage, but currently there is none on the market and it's bugged. Also, we got a glove upgrade. We went from one to two additional strikes. Now, this is extremely noticeable, especially if you do Delhi with a lot of um, pack size. We went for the plus one with AoE to give our Plague Bearer a little bit more juice, um, as well as that kind of get the accuracy rating needed to complement the passive tree here in order to be able to cut the cost today. Alternatively, you can also get it on helmet. Talking about helmet, we actually got a better base this time around, Lion Pelt or Evasion Base, so that is huge. Um, we got a better roll, we fixed our spell suppression, and we also got the physical damage taken as Ellie, which is incredibly strong. The more you get, the more efficient it is. Already a 50% for Lightning Coil, 15% here. 
the more the merrier. As for gems, um, the only thing we changed is we bought Awakened at Lightning Damage, which is huge. Next level is also going to give us plus one to Lightning Strike, so that's going to be insane. Uh, the Unbound Ailments, I did not have the money for it. They were actually quite expensive. Overall, I feel like Awakened Gems are a lot rarer this patch, um, and Awakened Vicious Projectiles are also very strong. Awakened Multi Strike was completely out of my price range. Yeah, this will be the last update to the build. But as for the Lee mechanic, I will make a lot more videos about it because I'm having quite fun now that I got the relics and I kind of understand how to do it. I feel like a lot of people will kind of warm up to this league mechanic in general. I still hope they buff quite a few things, but I think it's overall quite promising. I will take back some of the things that I said in the last video. They were a little bit uh, premature. Um, I think this league is very much saveable, a lot more than League of Calandra is. And overall, the base game is so fun that even if they don't fix it, even if I'm completely going to ignore it, I'm still having a ton of fun with the Atlas passives. And we're going to tinker around quite a bit here. So stuff regarding the lead mechanic and uh, a lot of farming threats, new builds will be coming out. Um, wait for it. I'm pumped for this league and see you next time. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, as always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do stuff like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah, I gotta say, I'm feeling good again. Mapping feels a lot more rewarding. I don't know what they did with monsters in general. It's not just rares. It feels like we got old loot back in a sense. Um, I don't know. They didn't really talk about it. So that's a little bit curious. Maybe I'm just completely on copium. But a lot of people in my chat have been saying the same. There's a lot more bubblegum currency just flying around as it used to before 3.19. Uh, overall, yeah, I'm really hopeful for this league and I'm having quite a bit of fun. So um, with that said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.